Hey everyone, it's Tammy Van Hollander, and I'm so excited to be with one of my colleagues and buddies, Robert Jason Grant. Robert, you are my go-to when it comes to anything autism. Robert Jason Grant, most of you already know his work and his work in aught play. And I was just thinking like, what a wonderful resource right now. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of moving to teleplay therapy, of really thinking about our kids who have autism and uh, even ADHD, because it does look a little bit different. And I, I really thought that you would be such a great resource to all of us in, in this time. Hi, Tammy. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for thinking of me and happy to help. I mean, I think that's something that's happening right now in a way that um, is really nice and feels good is that you see so many people willing to try and share resources, help, information, support, you know, the whole gamut. And that's really nice. I mean, that's, uh, I think, something that does have sort of a uniqueness to it in terms of the mental health community mm -hmm. that you may not find in other industries or businesses. And, and that's one thing that's been really nice to see. And so much selflessness, you know, people creating things and putting them out there and just sharing them and giving them. And uh, so that's what we're going to try to do today, a little bit. I'm not going to do it as well as everybody else, but I'm going to do what I can. <laughs> I have faith in you. You do pretty amazing right. work, Robert. <laughs> So I think I, I want to start with a, just a little, a little snippet about telehealth. This isn't necessarily just specific to kids with autism. It's kind of more for the practitioner. Uh, and that is just to say that, you know, telehealth as a mo modality, really telebehavioral therapy, I mean, I think is the correct term, analogy that's really being used, uh, has been around for several years very actively it's not so much something we do in play therapy but in mental health I have friends who have been exclusively doing telebehavioral health for several years mm -hmm. and very successful with it and getting great results it's the modality isn't an issue it's a it's an it's just another modality the issue I think is that because of this virus, so many people have felt like they were just thrown into it without having an opportunity to decide they wanted to do it mm -hmm. and an opportunity to plan for it and to put it together in the way that they were ready to launch their tele behavioral health services, right? Mm -hmm. That didn't happen for most people. It was sort of like frantically uh, what do I need to do? How do I get this child on the screen? And how do I keep this going? You know, and, and I really hope that everybody can just kind of relax and calm down. The modality is fine. It will work. You will still do good work with your kids. <laughs> uh, it, it's happened. It's happened for me. I've done uh, telesessions prior to the coronavirus with kids and it, it went well. Uh, so I think it's just taking the deep breath and remembering, uh, even though we're through a screen, it's the same thing. We're still being present. We're still giving empathy. We're still tracking, reflecting. We're still all those skills that we know to do that we would do in person. We're just doing them through a screen and just being patient with yourself. Uh, every session, every day, every week, everybody's going to get more comfortable with this and feel like um, I know how to do this and feel competent in it. And uh, I feel like it is viable. You know, I'm doing viable sessions and, and it's work that is okay and is important. Uh, and then we'll all go back into our playrooms. <laughs> It'll be over. Uh, but I just wanted to say that because it's almost like um, I sensed the panic in people. Right. And I get it and I and I get why, but it really is going to be okay. 
And maybe I'm just used to that in the autism world. I mean, even in in-person sessions, I have children who will crawl under a table and not speak for 45 minutes or won't come out of the waiting room from underneath a chair. And so like a child leaving a screen, just another day at the office. <laughs> it's like, I'm always in this place of, I don't know what's gonna happen and we're gonna go with what happens. And that's on a good day, even in person. Uh, when working with developmental disorders. So maybe that lessens my tele-behavioral health anxiety somewhat. <laughs> Already expecting the unexpected, so no surprises. Yeah, and I think that, you know, those of us who are doing it, I mean, it's been the most grounding part of my day of being able to be connected to them and seeing them going well and just that connection. I mean, I'm the most regulated when I'm in the playroom and I'm with my clients and being yeah. able to also have that and have that feeling in the screen with the midst of all of my own emotional anxiety of everything going on in the world that my reset is being able to go and connect with these my clients and have these sessions. So for me, that's been very, very grounding and helpful for my own anxiety that I'm able to just be present with them. So that's Absolutely. really helpful as a clinician. Yeah, you bring up a really interesting point. And I, I noticed this uh, years ago. I did my first telebehavioral session with a child who was in long-term hospital recovery. Mm -hmm. And so um, I won't give any details, but... Um, I noticed even then that uh, after I started that, um, I was really, and this may just be me, but I was so much more focused, <laughs> intensely focused in the tele-session than sometimes I was in in-person sessions. So much so that I noticed that they were more draining for me like I would get through these and I'd be like, why am I so tired? <laughs> Cause I'm not moving around, I'm not playing. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's my mental focus. Yeah. I'm like so yeah. intensely focused on the screen and trying to see them and talk to them and, and keep this connection that it's like draining. Yeah. And I think it does sometimes take more of your energy because we are still connecting we are still in relationship. Mm -hmm. And for some of us, like me, you may even find that you feel like you're almost doing it more or with more effort. It's like on a your laser part focus that you really have when you're looking right yeah. in that lens, then being able to That's move right. on that laser focus really can be very depleting. But we're so present, yes. I agree, in terms of that piece of- So present. Yeah. It's a really yeah, interesting right. point. And I think when so many people have been saying, oh, I'm extra tired, but we are, we're putting on yeah. even more emotional energy of, of that presence. Yeah. Being presence is, being present and uh, is exhausting. Uh, I really think, I think it is the most demanding sort of part of therapy. And I've done, you know, a whole variety, even with kids with autism from, what would be considered, um, you know, less structured, more structured, non-directive to directive, however you want to go with it. And, and, and certainly for me, I think some of the more um, energy draining pieces is when I'm really focused on being present and giving that true, genuine focus and empathy and tracking and reflecting um yeah i mean it just takes from you like it takes energy <laughs> and i think everybody who's experienced it knows that i think it's hard for the bystander to observe that uh but they just don't get it <laughs> when you do it you know what we're talking about and i just feel like that comes out of me even more in a telebehavioral session like you said because i feel like i'm laser in like every second I can't even I don't even move my head to see what else is going on in my room I'm right here right. you know the whole time with this child mm -hmm. yeah 
I would 100% agree with that. And I think that's why people were even talking about spacing out their clients than doing back to back, that it's so much more exhausting. And we feel it on our whole bodies and just stiff yeah. and achy. And it, it really is such an important time for self-care. Certainly is. Give yourself a break. Be patient. You're doing good. You're doing the best you can. I mean, this is a, a crisis pandemic for a reason. That means you get thrown into things. You don't have the time necessarily to prepare like you normally would. So there just has to be a lot of grace and patience, I think, you know, with ourselves right now, too. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. you know, I'm going to ask you a question just in terms of some of the kiddos that I've seen that maybe on, on the spectrum and really have a lot of sensory needs and really don't want to be on screen um, and have hid and I've, we've tried to do puppets and, and different creative ways of being able to do some of the telehealth or teleplay therapy. Yeah. Do you, is that something that comes up a lot amongst your clients and i would just be curious selfishly in terms of ways of really being able to connect with with them you know when when, when those things are really hard just the idea of that being on screen and it's, it's just it's too much for them uh yeah. to, be, to be looking right right at you and I, I, yeah. i'm seeing that with a couple of of my clients yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, um, a lot of the kids that I work with with autism, of course, we know it's a spectrum. So we're going to get different experiences depending on the severity level of the impairment, right? So let's kind of stop at the, let's start at the least impaired and we'll work our way down to more severely impaired. Uh, if we're talking about, you know, kids who are less impaired, maybe your traditional Asperger's type child, really, they do pretty well with telebehavioral processes. First of all, they tend to like electronics and screens, kind of tend to be drawn to them. And we have some research that supports that individuals with autism have a greater draw to technology uh, than neurotypical individuals. So, the idea of being in front of a tablet or a computer or a phone and talking to someone uh, is something they might even enjoy more than being in person in your room. And certainly, I think like what we do in alt play, which has a structured element where we can play a game, we can do an activity that's teaching a social skill or teaching some connection or emotional regulation ability, it's pretty easy to do through a screen. Uh, a lot of the off-play interventions can be done that way. They don't necessarily have to be in person. So the transfer over uh, is not that challenging, really. And I think even if you're not doing off-play, but you're working with this child on the autism spectrum who needs to work on social skills, there's still a lot you can do right through the screen to work on those social skills. Just keep your treatment goals going just like they were when you were in person with that child. As we move down um, and we work, start working with more severely impaired kids, sometimes it gets a little more complicated because mm -hmm. um, oftentimes that pres physical presence with them in the playroom is so important for what we're working on. Right. in terms of attunement ability, right? It's a little bit harder for me to get attunement ability when they can just walk away from me and I can't do anything about it. They can turn the phone over <laughs> on the carpet and not see me. And I'm like, hey, is anybody there? Like I had one kid slam down, slam down their laptop. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still over here. Um, right. But I think what we do a lot is we really bring the parent in. Mm -hmm. With, especially when we're doing a tele session and it's a child who's more severely impaired and we have the parent and the child working together. So we're teaching them how to have a playtime or teaching them a specific intervention to do together that's still working on whatever our treatment goals were. And that goes a lot better. So, you know, if you are working with kids 
on the spectrum who may be moderate, more severe impairment, you really might consider bringing the parent in if you haven't been doing that already uh, and really working with the parent and child together to sort of teach them a playtime or again, maybe a specific intervention they can do together. Uh, in alt play, oftentimes the parents are involved. So they were already used to doing that in person in the playroom. So it's not that big of a deal to know that they're gonna be doing that now through a screen. And we're teaching, observing, providing feedback to them in that process. But some of the things you picked up on one right away, uh, some of the things that you just kind of want to understand, one of those is, yeah, they're not going to look in the screen a lot like this to you and me. That's not how it's going to be. You're going to get, you know, one of these, you know, or you're going to get something like this or like the shoes or who knows. And the phone or the screen is going to go all over the place. And it's probably not going to be direct, direct, face to face because you're right. They probably aren't real comfortable with that. Just looking at you eye to eye or even face to face. And it's okay. It doesn't mean that they're not connecting with us. Mm -hmm. They're connecting with us. Being present through this device, they are connecting. Uh, historically, uh, even with in-person experiences, children with autism do connect. They're, they are feeling like there is a relationship here that they are getting familiar with, comfortable with this other person, but they're not going to show it in the way that a neurotypical child will show it. So don't get hung up on making sure that they're right in front of your screen, right with their face toward you all the time. Mm -hmm. Just keep on with what you're doing and don't worry so much about that because they are present with you probably more than you realize, even though it may not be what you're used to getting to recognize that they're being present with you. You know, that makes me think of when, before we started, you were talking about moving, moving around. And, yes. you know, I was saying that, you know, for me, if I'm giving a presentation, I can't sit still. So for many yeah. of the kids, kids with ADHD in general, they need to be moving in order to yeah. be taking in the information, in order to be listening. So if they're giving you that laser focus, they're giving, they're staring at you, but they can't process any of the information because they're they're not moving around and their wheels aren't moving. So I think that's, that's right. We need to really be aware of that they need movement in order to be taking in and listening to, you know, what, what the information or whatever resources or interventions that we are giving them as well as even that connection. It's also them really needing that movement. Yeah. And it's okay. And I think that's the big piece for the therapist is not trying to control this and feeling like it has to look one certain way to be effective and valuable. Mm -hmm. And just understanding that, you know, we probably experienced some of this even in the playroom with these kids and we're maybe even forgetting that, but we're certainly going to experience it through the screen or the device. I don't think I've had one session with one of my kids yet who has switched to teleservices that looked like this, that looked like you and me right now. Right. Not <laughs> one single one has went like this. Mm -hmm. We have been walking, we've been doing laps around the house, we've been yeah. doing laps inside the house, we've been up on the bed, off the bed. I mean, it's been like movement central, right? Mm -hmm. And this is really true for kids on the spectrum. It's kind of true for all kids, but really true for kids with develop, neurodevelopmental disorders. Right. I think that's been so wonderful in terms of all these in interviews and all these videos that I'm doing. It's really been like giving permission, like it's all okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that we just have to recognize it's all okay and that we have to let go of this rigidity. And I've said this in almost every one of my videos. It's just in terms of trusting the process following their lead and like just recognizing yeah. that that core relationship 
is so important and that connection and that's like the foundation yes. of all of it and that's that's the start that it's all about that relationship it is and and you know it's also for kids with neurodevelopmental disorders consistency mm -hmm. and i think it's important that they continue to see you that's a really big piece right there <laughs> I mean, if you weren't doing anything else or felt like you weren't, uh, which is probably not really the case, but even if it was, just showing up and providing that consistency every week, it's still the same time, I'm here, even though it's through a screen, is a really big deal because kids with autism, regulation for them is consistency. You know, a schedule, the routine, what I'm expecting that happens at this time is regulation for them. And probably many other things in their life have been completely disrupted. The routine is gone. Yeah. The consistency is gone. And so continuing to show up and provide that is really helpful. This could go on for a while. And you would want to be staying connected with them through showing up every week, same time, same day, just a different method, but I'm still showing up and you're still seeing me. We're still having this time. And kids, we know, are resilient, right? I mean, probably by the time all this is over, they're all going to be loving their telehealth sessions and not wanting to come back into mm -hmm. like, <laughs> Right. Me <laughs> too. Maybe I'll go travel the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll travel the we're world and just like see everybody through it. I'm going to be ready to be <laughs> get it out. <laughs> yeah. But, but so important just to remember that you are, whoops, there, that, yeah. That is so important that you are showing up and mm -hmm. trying, even if, and, and let's be honest, most of us prefer, I certainly do even, to be in the playroom with all my clients. Right. It's what we are, and it's what we're all going back to as soon as we possibly can. Right. But in the meantime, it's important to show up and stay present, especially with our kids with autism. They need that consistency. Right. Robert, that's, it's, it's all so helpful. So I appreciate you coming on and it was just so, I was just so happy to see you and see your face and yeah. just like reconnect <laughs> with you. How can people find out more about your trainings and about Ought Play? Because so many of your books as well and your, the resources that you have in your books are really can all be used, you know, in, in a telehealth, teleplay therapy um, format. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe you can oh. just, yeah, say, say where, where people can find you, but I'll also link it all to the video so people can find okay. out more about, about Aunt Play. Sounds good. Uh, the best place to go is, of course, the website, which is uh, autplaytherapy.com, A-U-T-P-L-A-Y therapy.com. Um, that will get you any other information you need to get is <laughs> okay. just going to the website uh there you can email us from there you can call us uh obviously the trainings are all there more about the uh program in general describing it uh if anybody's interested in looking into it obviously it's a play therapy um based approach for working with kids with autism and developmental disorders and uh, I like it. <laughs> I like uh, I it. I did the it. online class and it was wonderful. So. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, and if anybody has any questions, they can definitely contact us. Happy to share any information or answer any questions that we can. Okay. Great. Yeah. Well, Robert, thank you so much for being on and you and your family and everybody be well. You too. Thank you for this and all the other great videos. Check them all out, everybody. Aww. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Robert. Take care. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye.